Former NCAA swimmer Riley Gaines sharing how she became an advocate for female athletes after sharing her first place victory with trans swimmer Leah Thomas in the college championships. I'm standing on the podium and we're clapping and we're smiling and we're cheering and it hit me. I'm like, what in the world are we clapping for? Because, I mean, really what we're applauding is our own erasure, our own demolition. I felt guilty for participating in the farce. I felt guilty for even getting in the water. Riley Gaines is an OutKick contributor and host of OutKick's Gaines for Girls podcast, and she joins us now. Riley, thanks for being here. I, that was a cool moment in the podcast. I mean, people think of you now because of what your willingness to be so bold on this topic, but you really just wanted to swim, and ultimately you were thrown into the middle of it. You're exactly right. Uh, this was never a position that I saw myself in. Nevertheless, a position I saw anyone really being in. I never imagined it would be necessary to defend what we're defending now. Um, I had graduated from University of Kentucky with my degree in human health sciences and health law. Uh, I was set to be in dental school. I'd already put my deposit down, accepted my seat, uh, was going to specialize in endodontics, which is root canals of all things. Um, so look, never a position I saw myself in. Truthfully, I didn't understand our civil process. I didn't understand civics in general. Uh, admittedly, I knew we had three branches of government. I didn't know what they did. I don't know if I really still know what they do. I don't even think they know what they do, to be totally <laughs> frank with you. Um, so never a position I saw myself in, but uh, I felt God's calling, honestly. Uh, and every day I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I pray for direction and protection. And he provides. Yeah, Beautiful. and protection. You Beautiful. took a, you took a lot of abuse. I saw that video of you even going to speak at a university, and and your life was in danger. Saying what's so common sense, um, but what I think is really interesting about your story, and Riley, you know I'm a big fan. I've been following you for a long time, because I think you've done more than save women's sports. I think what you've done is is much deeper. It's much more profound. I think you have redefined what feminism is in so many ways. The the left stole feminism and said it was about abortion and the ability to kill your own child. And you actually stood up for something that actually impacted women. And those same people who said that it was about abortion um, were the first ones to stand up and attack you. It was so ironic, and yet you stood strong. It is ironic. Uh, even just thinking about a month ago when I testified before Congress, one of the Democrat witnesses was the president of the National Women's Law Center, a law center dedicated to advocating and fighting for women. Uh, and in her opening testimony, she said women should just learn how to lose more gracefully in sports. And you think of someone like Billie Jean King, right, really who we have to accredit Title IX to. Uh, she is actively undermining everything she once fought for and fighting for male inclusion in women's sports and women's spaces. So ironic is a good word, almost comical if, if there weren't real consequences to what these women who claim to be feminists are fighting for. And look, pre prior to this, I never would have considered myself a feminist, but I think it's time we reclaim what it means to be a feminist, because look, I am pro-woman. I am pro-truth, I am pro-fairness, I am pro-reality, uh, pro-common sense. I'm not standing against anything, I'm standing for women. Well, we wanted to get you while we have you here today on something that's in the news, and that is the NXXT banning um, men from participating in their women's event. It's the feeder tournament, feeder tour into the LPGA. Um, they've banned trans golfers from coming into the NXXT. Um, there was a male, his name is Haley Davidson, and, and he had won a tournament. I think he was second in the tour standings at some point on NXXT. What are your thoughts on their move? Well, I, I think this is huge. Uh, NXXT would not have done this without public pressure and without public mm -hmm. outrage, um, which shows you how powerful we the people are. And it, it really shows you how this is a uniting issue. I think the media and our, our elected officials, our government, um, they make this seem very polarizing, like it's very divisive, but in reality, it is not. And when we come together, when we that's unify, right. when we um, stand in solidarity, that's how we advance. Uh, so I could not be more proud and really grateful of the, the decision that NXXT had. Uh, it makes it a lot harder for Haley Davidson to earn a bid uh, for the LGPA, LPGA tournament. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. They're making a difference. No, I, I was, yeah, I was just going to say, you stood up when a lot of mothers weren't standing up for their daughters in sports. You stood up, you, you were the voice of common sense, and you deserve a lot of 
credit for what we just saw happen in that golf tournament. Um, you stood up and took those arrows early, but you're right, common sense um, is prevailing, and, and we have a lot of people like you to thank for that. Really. Thank you, well, Riley. That's the thank truth. Thank you, guys. Thanks, I appreciate Riley. you guys. You got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.